they're very alienated from the society. They don't really feel they've got a place in it and they don't have hope for the future. I think that there are several factors. Clearly there is a lot of antagonism towards China. I think the origins of that are obvious. You know, basically 156 years of British colonialism have left them knowing very little about China and, uh, and quite prejudiced actually towards China. That's a long-term problem, a long-term question. It, it's not an easy one to resolve in a short space of time. Secondly, I think that they feel their economic prospects in Hong Kong are extremely limited. I think they feel shut out of Hong Kong society, actually. I mean, it's not just about... This is not particularly to do with China, actually. But this is a very, very unequal society. It's one of the most unequal in the world. Property prices are ridiculous. That, that's a very, a very powerful sense of their alienation uh, from Hong Kong society. And I think they feel that um, the prospects for their future in terms of jobs and so on is, is not at all good. Um, so I think these, these are some of the factors that are, are behind the kind of behaviour. I mean, there is a, one other interesting thought. See, before the handover, Hong Kong had a very hubristic view of itself. They thought that Hong Kong's success between 78 and 1997, the handover, was because of them. You know? and, um, and it wasn't. It was because of China's transformation. They made a contribution, but the underlying reason was Hong Kong became the front office for China. Now, at the time of the handover, the Hong Kong economy was about, about a quarter of the size of the Chinese economy. Today, it's less than 3%. So from being like having a place in the sun, they now feel they don't really matter. That's a difficult psychological problem to adjust to. I think that integration into the Greater Bay Area is really important for Hong Kong. I think Hong Kong can benefit from it in various ways. I mean, that young people in Hong Kong need to interact and uh, gain experience about what's happening in Guangdong. I mean, imagine some of these kids who've got, who don't do reason but school, having an internship in a Huawei or in Tencent and breathing some of the creative technological atmosphere in Shenzhen. I think that's going to be very important for them. They, they talk about waving British flags and American flags. I mean, that's the declining part of the world. They're living on the edge of the most exciting part of the world. So come on, wake up, boys, girls. Well, I've, I've been struck in my own country, UK, about the extent to which the media across the board have supported the demonstrators indiscriminately, making no distinction between the big peaceful demonstration against the extradition bill on the one hand, and on the other hand, these completely nihilistic, uh, violent, almost terrorist uh, kind of activities. You know, the British are hubristic about their relationship with Hong Kong. They think that they were wonderful colonial masters of Hong Kong, they, don't, they know it's embarrassing to talk about colonialism because it did so much damage in the world, but on the other hand, they're still in some way or another attached to it. Complicated psychological problem the British have got.